Hello, happy Thursday. Um, I'm Chris, one of the co-founders of Trace Cat, and I'm just going to speed run and build a playbook which takes a webhook. And within that webhook, there will be a field called URL. We're going to pass in the virus total. We're going to do enrichment. We're going to get back the results, and we're going to open a case in Trace Cat if the number of malicious reports is greater than some number, like super standard stuff. But I'm going to race for it and try to get it done in two minutes. Let's go. So first, this is Tracecat. This is your. This is the first thing you see where you list out all the workflows you have uh, created. As you can see here, I've created different workspaces. I've got a security workspace and IT workspace. Different workspaces allow you to isolate secrets, users, and, and workflows across your organization. Uh, in this case, I want to switch into the security in my security workspace. I already have a previous playbook, but I want to create something from you. So there you go. Create, create workflow. Great. So this is the first thing you see in the workspace. Tracecat workspace is pretty standard, but we designed it to be extremely clean. Um, it should feel super intuitive to start working with this user interface. So first thing I want to do is I want to drag a new node. And like I said, what we want to do is we receive the alert from the trigger. So the trigger node represents uh, the webhook listener. And now I want to pass that information into the virus total integration. So we analyze URL. Boom. There you go. Sweet. Uh, what's really cool is Trace Guy comes with a YAML editor to define your inputs. Uh, quite similar to GitHub Actions. So here I want to get the URL. I define the URL. As you can see the parameter right here, URL for the virus total integration. And I use these curly bracket syntax, you know, to to essentially get the data trigger, trigger is the previous node, uh, is, is the entry node, and then want to get the URL field from the webhook. Um, you'll see what I mean when we actually run this workflow. But that's it, and I want to save it. Sweet. And then I want to create another action. So let's say I only want to, I want to open a case, a case management. By the way, yeah, Trisca comes with a nice little case management system that we built. Uh, inspired by Rapid7's case management system. So with status, uh, malice, action, and context. Cool. Uh, there you go. So to, so let's, just, okay, let, let's, maybe let's try to do something a bit more advanced. So like I said, I only want to open a case if the number of malicious reports is say greater than 10. By the way, if you've never run virus total before, virus total when it returns you the say say you send say um, please help me give me a report about this URL. For example, CrowdStrike BlueScreen.com. Um, it then sends you a list, a list of reports from different vendors like Bitdefender and your whatever other vendors. Uh, and in order to understand what, and then what it does is it aggregates all these reports and tell you how many of these reports are actually malicious or not. Like, like reported as malicious or not reported malicious. So I only want to create a case if, so I get the actions, analyze URL, which refers to the previous action, dot, I want to get the result from that action, and dot data, dot attributes, dot last analysis stats. So everything here, dot data dot attributes dot last analysis stats. That's how you traverse the output, the result, the result, the JSON, the JSON that's sent from virus total. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we look at the workflow run um, afterwards. So I want the number of malicious reports to be greater than 10. Only open the case if the number of malicious reports is greater than 10. Sweet. So this defines the conditional. So what's really cool about Tracecat as well is that every action comes with a run if condition to control uh, whether your action runs, you know, just like in GitHub Actions if you've ever used that before. Okay, now let's define the inputs. So I already got one prepared. I want to specify action. Action is an informational case. Uh, it is malicious, you know, and open case. The payload for the payload. Let's just get the last. Uh, let's just get. Let's get the whole. Let's get the whole thing. And for priority, okay, this is really interesting. So Tracecat, like I said, comes with an extremely powerful expressions language, um, which means you can define things like this directly within your inputs. 
which really consolidates and cleans up your playbook. Right here I said I want to set the priority high if the number of malicious reports is actually greater than 30, otherwise set the priority to medium. Um, this is really cool. It's, it's if you, like I said, if you're familiar with Git Reactions or any kind of, or a Jenkins or a CICD pipeline, um, this should feel very familiar and easy to understand for you. And what's cool about Tracecat is, like I said, we built this super powerful sword that combines the best of both worlds. Uh, so let's save this action. Done. Great. So we've saved all the actions in this playbook, in this workflow, and all that's left is to commit, a, aka save this workflow. Boom. Congratulations, you created version one of August 22, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this, let's, let's give them more, a nicer name. So let's call this um, enrich URL then open case. If really bad. Save. Awesome. Um, and you can see that the workflow title has been changed. Now let's test this workflow. URL CrowdStrike Blue Screen dot com. So if you recall right, in order to pass the URL from the webhook payload into analyze URL integration, I did trigger dot URL. So the dot URL is what's happening here. Right? Essentially I'm extracting the dot URL field, the value for this field from the JSON webhook payload. And all I do now is just click run. Ta da da, Wolf Run is started. Let's go into runs, check it out, check out your executions, there you go. And what's really cool, you know, just like any other SOAR, you can have, we emit, we collect all the events that were collected from the different, from the different actions in your playbook, workflow, whatever, uh, and you can follow through it here. So previously I mentioned that we were getting the report from virus total. And if you look here, they have a bunch of fields called last analysis results. 69 items, which means they actually collect the results from 69 different vendors about whether this URL is malicious or not. Uh, but we don't want to do that. That's too complicated. We just want to look at the final analysis stats, which essentially counts up the number of malicious reports, harmless reports, suspicious reports, blah, yada, yada, yada. Um, so if you recall right, in, in our, in, when, when defining the open case to get the last analysis results, I did dot data dot attributes dot last analysis results dot malicious. Uh, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Right, I'm going dot data dot attributes dot last analysis stats dot malicious. Once again, if you ever use GitHub Actions, if you use any other sort of platform, we use JSON path match to collect your data, standard stuff. Uh, and finally, we open a case and directly in trace guide. So, so where 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 the case created? So let's let's go back into the security workspace. Uh, what's really cool is you can create many different workflows in your workspace, and we can we aggregate all those cases generated into a common view here. Yeah, sorry. So there was a bit of technical difficulties. Uh, you may see a jump just now, but that's it. That's the demo. Um, do check us out. We have our brand new documentation. Um, we've added our self hosted section at the very top as well, so it should be super easy for you to find if you want to install this and get it for a test run. Um, if you want to run it on prem, you can check our Docker Compose template. We have folks who've deployed this in Azure into GCP. It's pretty cool. Otherwise, if you're on AWS, we actually have this super simple Terraform stack, um, which abstracts away the deployment process into a single instance. It works really well, you know, just, just like throw it onto a T3 X large. You've got a super affordable, robust SOAR that does your automations for free. Um, uh, we are working on a Fargate stack. So this is something I'm working on over the weekend. And if you want to run this in prod, we definitely recommend doing so if you're, an, if you're on Amazon. Um, and of course, join our Discord, right? We've got a fantastic Discord community here. Um, if you've got any questions, you've got any use cases, you want to show off this cool YouTube video or use case or playbook that you build, Tracecat, we'll love for you to do so there. We will do lots of thumbs up and rocket stars and, and cool emojis. So 
Thanks, guys. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, by the way, the, the, the video which I just showed you, the little playbook, um, you can also try it yourself in the quick start um, here. Yeah, I've got a bunch of screenshots. Uh, there's some parts which I missed out on, for example, how to create secrets, but you know, just follow through the tutorial. It's, you can do it in 15 minutes. I did it in 10 minutes with commentary, but honestly, if you just probably speed run it. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Have a great Thursday.